Hey there, science fans. Have you ever wondered how puddles disappear after it rains? Or how clothes dry on a clothesline even though the sun isn't directly heating them? The answer is evaporation, a truly amazing process that's essential for life on Earth. Evaporation is like water's magic trick. It transforms liquid water into an invisible gas called water vapor, which then floats up into the atmosphere. Evaporation is a key part of the water cycle, the continuous movement of water on, above and below the Earth's surface. It's like a giant invisible water slide. Water evaporates from oceans, lakes, rivers and even the soil. It then travels up into the atmosphere where it cools and condenses to form clouds. Eventually the water falls back to Earth as precipitation like rain or snow and the cycle begins all over again. Without evaporation, there would be no clouds, no rain, and no life as we know it. Pretty amazing, right? So next time you see a puddle drying up, remember the magic of evaporation at work. Now that we know what evaporation is, let's dive a little deeper and explore the factors that influence how quickly water evaporates. Evaporation is a fascinating process that plays a crucial role in the water cycle and affects our daily lives in many ways. Think of it like this, you're trying to dry a wet towel. You might hang it outside on a sunny day or use a hairdryer to speed up the process. Some things will make it dry faster, right? The same principles apply to the evaporation of water from any surface. The same goes for evaporation. Several factors can influence the rate at which water evaporates and understanding these can help us predict and even control the process. Temperature. Just like that towel dries faster on a warm day, higher temperatures mean faster evaporation. When the temperature rises, the water molecules gain more energy. Heat gives the water molecules more energy to escape from the liquid state and become a gas. This is why boiling water produces steam so rapidly. Solar radiation. The sun's energy is a major driver of evaporation. The more intense the sunlight, the more energy is available to convert liquid water into vapor. More sunshine means more energy to power the transformation from liquid to gas. This is why water bodies tend to evaporate faster on sunny days. Wind speed. Imagine trying to dry your hair with a hair dryer. The moving air helps to carry away the moisture. A stronger wind does the same thing for evaporation. It increases the rate at which water molecules leave the surface. It sweeps away the water vapour that's already evaporated, making room for more water molecules to escape. This is why windy conditions can lead to faster drying. Humidity. If the air is already full of moisture, high humidity, it's harder for more water vapour to evaporate. The air can only hold so much water vapour. Think of it like trying to add more clothes to an already full dryer. The more saturated the air, the slower the evaporation process. Surface area. A larger surface area means more water molecules are in direct contact with the air, leading to faster evaporation. This is why spreading water out over a larger area can speed up drying. This is why a shallow puddle dries faster than a deep bucket of water. The greater the surface area, the more opportunities for water molecules to escape. Water quality. Believe it or not, the stuff in water can affect how quickly it evaporates. Impurities and dissolved substances can alter the evaporation rate. Water with more dissolved salts, like seawater, evaporates more slowly. The presence of salts increases the boiling point and reduces the rate of evaporation. Atmospheric pressure. Lower air pressure makes it easier for water to evaporate. At higher altitudes, where the air pressure is lower, water boils at a lower temperature. Think of it like taking the lid off a pot of boiling water. The steam escapes more easily. This is why cooking times can vary at different altitudes. So the next time you see a puddle, think about these factors. Consider the temperature, sunlight, wind, humidity, surface area, water quality and atmospheric pressure. And see if you can guess how quickly it will evaporate. Understanding these principles can give you a new appreciation for the everyday phenomenon of evaporation. We've talked about water evaporating from surfaces like lakes and puddles, but did you know that plants play a big role in evaporation too? Yes, plants are not just passive players in the water cycle, they are active participants, it's true. 
Plants release water vapour into the atmosphere through a process called transpiration. This process is crucial for the plant's health and for the environment. Plants need water to survive and they get it through their roots from the soil. The roots act like straws, drawing up water and nutrients from the ground. But they don't use all the water they absorb. In fact, a significant portion of this water is released back into the atmosphere. Some of it escapes through tiny pores on their leaves called stomata. These stomata are essential for the plant's ability to breathe and regulate its internal water balance. These stomata are like little mouths that open and close to allow for gas exchange. They play a critical role in photosynthesis, the process by which plants make their food. When the stomata are open, water vapour inside the leaf escapes into the atmosphere. This is transpiration. It's a fascinating process that helps to cool the plant and maintain its internal water balance. When we combine transpiration from plants with evaporation from land and water surfaces, we get a super important process called evapotranspiration. This combined process is essential for the movement of water within the ecosystem. Evapotranspiration is a big word, but it simply means the total amount of water that's lost from a land surface to the atmosphere through both evaporation and transpiration. It's a key component in the water cycle, influencing weather patterns and climate. It's a vital part of the water cycle because it helps to move vast amounts of water from the ground back into the atmosphere. Without evapotranspiration, the water cycle would be incomplete and life as we know it would be drastically different. So next time you see a plant, remember, it's not just growing, it's also playing a crucial role in our planet's water cycle. Let's dig a little deeper, literally. Soil is much more than just dirt. It's a living, breathing ecosystem that supports life on Earth. Soil plays a crucial role in evapotranspiration, which is the process of water movement through a plant and its evaporation from aerial parts like leaves, stems and flowers. It acts like a giant sponge, soaking up water from rainfall or irrigation and storing it for plants to use. This stored water is essential for plant growth and helps maintain the balance of our ecosystem. But just like a sponge can only hold so much water, soil has its limits too. When soil reaches its saturation point, it can't absorb any more water, leading to runoff or waterlogging. Field capacity. Imagine watering a potted plant. After a certain point, the soil can't hold any more water and the excess starts to drain out. Eventually, the excess water drains out the bottom, right? This is because the soil has reached its field capacity. Field capacity is like that. It's the maximum amount of water the soil can hold against gravity after excess water has drained away. This is a critical concept for understanding how much water is available for plants. Permanent wilting point. If you forget to water your plant for too long, it wilts because it can't access the water tightly held by the soil particles. This is a sign that the soil moisture has dropped below a critical level. This is similar to the permanent wilting point, the moisture level in the soil at which plants can no longer extract water and begin to wilt. At this point, the soil holds water so tightly that plant roots can't access it. Available water. This is the sweet spot for plants. It's the range of soil moisture between field capacity and the permanent wilting point where plants can easily access water. It's the amount of water in the soil that's actually available for plants to use falling between field capacity and the permanent wilting point. This is the optimal range for plant growth and health. Understanding these soil water concepts is crucial for farmers and gardeners because it helps them determine how much water their plants need and when to irrigate. Proper irrigation practices ensure that plants receive the right amount of water, promoting healthy growth and maximizing crop yields. So next time you see soil, remember it's not just dirt. It's a vital resource that supports life, playing a key role in water management and plant health. By understanding and managing soil moisture, we can create thriving gardens and sustainable agricultural systems. Thank you for watching. And if you learned something new, please subscribe to our channel for more informative videos.